let's let's understand what an option is. Uh, that from uh, so basically there are two kinds of options. Very broad uh, classification. Uh, two kinds. Okay. Call option. Put option. Okay. Let's see. Let's see what a what a call option is. Uh, in definition and let's see what the payoff is. Uh, so a call option is essentially uh, an option to buy an underlying at a certain price called the strike uh, at a certain at a certain point in time. So to be specific, I mean I'm referring to European call options. So I told let me just uh, put down the parameters of the definition. So these are European options. And let's then go to, so I can buy the underlying, at a certain price called the strike, at a certain time. So to give an option, let's see there's a ABC stock, I, at uh, trading at uh, say, say 60, and uh, and and say I buy a call option. It's this is the current price. So let's say the strike is 50, and the time is say three months. So this just means that um, I have the I have the right. Right is a very or an option. But I'm not obligated to. But I have a right or option to buy this uh, this stock option, which uh, of an underlying which is uh, which is trading at 60 right now. To b I can buy it at at 50 at the end of three months. So and um, and uh, as you would have guessed, as you know, you guys know, you pay a premium for this. So you need to pay something for this. See, these are not zero-cost instruments. So you need to you need to pay upfront something to buy this instrument. So I say it's an option. So uh, so let's just think uh, when would we exercise this option, or uh, when would we claim this uh, 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 this option? So we would uh, we would obviously buy it at 50 if we cannot. Uh, if if it is trading at higher than 50 uh at in the market so if it is uh, trading at say 70 or say 55 or whatever so then i can i can i can use my option to buy it at 50 but uh, assume we are uh we are uh, it's trading at 40 then i wouldn't exercise this option i can go to market and just buy it at 40 so this this uh, this ha this makes sense to me at the end of the uh, expiry. I c this makes sense to me only if uh, the stock price is trading above above 50. So, so I, I we we we've uh, understood that if it if it uh, if it if it is trading less than 50, then it does not uh, make any sense to exercise this option. So, uh, so the the payoff from the option so this is this would be payoff from the option so if it's pay from the option so if it is uh, less than 50 my payoff would be just zero so this is let's forget the premium so we are we are not considering the premium right now let's let's get that into the picture later Okay. So, but uh, so assume it is trading at uh, 55, and because you bought the call option, uh, you can buy it at 50. So your payoff is essentially five, because you are buying at a five rupee discount than the market. So if this is five, this is my payoff. And uh, similarly, if it is trading at 60, my payoff is. 
Hence, uh, my payoff, uh, as you would imagine, is a linear, linear uh, function only above the strike price. So this is the strike price, and this is the this is my payoff at the end of expiry. <coughs> so, so this is my payoff. So, so let's get uh, premium into the picture right now. So, if I'm paying a premium of, uh, uh, say, so we we considered the underlying at uh, say 60, and the strike is at 50. Say, say for example, premium is. Uh, 15 let's see what is the range of premiums we could take can we take premium as 5 can the premium be 20 can the premium be 100 let's let, let's look at the what premiums could what it could be later but let's assume uh, the premium is 15 uh, <coughs> so if my premium is 15 this this whole payoff diagram just shifts down by 15 as you would imagine right so my payoff would be like this if this would be 15 because uh, say let's assume it uh, at the end of 3 months it ends up at 45 i have paid 15 rupees up front 15 uh, units 15 whatever up front and i have received nothing in return so i have my net Outflow is 15. Uh, let's assume uh, uh, it ends up at 55. I, I make five. So this uh, this is this diagram is for just a representative thing. So it has to be more. There's a it it will break even at 65 because I make uh, 15 rupees from the payoff and I have paid premium 15. At 65 I am break even. But say it ends up at 70. I make uh, I make five, so so this is the payoff from a call option, European call option. I call this European because you can exercise this option only at the end of expiry. So similarly for a put option, so where call option uh, is a, is a, is, a, is an option to buy uh, buy an underlying at a certain strike. Um, at the end of the expiry, uh, put option is a is a option to sell the underlying, sell the underlying uh, at a certain price, at a certain price at the end of expiry. So, as you would imagine, the the payoff of a put option would be at the at expiry. So I'm I'm just stressing this is at expiry. Please note this is at expiry. Would be like this, and with the with the premium, this would be shifted down. So just just uh, just think about it. If this payoff for put makes sense, just take some values. Say it's 45. Say it's 40. So uh, say it goes to 40. And I am selling something at 50, where uh, the actual market is at 40. Actual underlying is trading at 40. So I have a I have a payoff of 10. So I am selling it uh, higher than the market price. Hence the payoff. So you can see the call and put are uh, quite symmetrical. And uh, just note that i can derive one from the other or i can construct one from the other let's see how we do it later but we can do it so in in essence call and put uh, from a from a trader's perspective uh, call and put are quite uh, uh, quite similar in nature because i can construct one from the